Hi guys! Welcome back to the Storytime Society. I am so happy to have you all here. Um, thank you so much for watching. My like cords are a little bit messed up today, but we are okay. Well, we're going to start off with, I guess, what we're drinking because Willa is trying to get my drink right now. Um, I'm drinking an iced coffee again and it's so good. I got some cold foam, foam from Target because... Whenever I make my cold foam, it's just not that good. So why not just buy like a cheap can and you can literally just spray it and I don't have to take the effort to make cold foam and then also have to wash an extra dish. Oh, Willa's having fun. Are you playing? She's so cute. So this one's really good. Sugar-free vanilla and then the cold foam is salted caramel. So cheers to whatever you're drinking. Let me know whether that be like a water, an electrolytes, coffee, pop. Who knows? Um, it is another semi-rainy day. Not too bad, but it's like a little bit of a cozy day. I also, I don't know why I have my sunglasses on, but I'm kind of like wanting to wear them as a headband right now because I don't want my hair in my face. I was going to wear them, but, like, they're way too dark for an inside moment. But it does, like, it does make things look, like, feel better and less bright. Well, isn't that what sunglasses are for? Um, okay. We can get into story time. Like, subscribe, comment, turn on your notifications, share this with a friend, you know, all that jazz. And... This is probably the quickest I've ever actually jumped into story time. So I'm sure those of you that skip through the intros are so happy right now. Uh, okay, I'm just going to make sure I'm comfortable before I really start the job. I love how right when I start filming, like my cats just start acting up like they're sleeping all day. And then as soon as I start filming, they're going absolutely feral. Okay, let's see what stories we're going to read today. I saved a bunch this morning as I always do, but I just want to like, I always like to start with the first one being like the best or most interesting to me. Like what I'm most drawn to when I look. Okay. I always also like to see what the upvotes are. Like this one has 8,000 upvotes and 2.7 thousand comments. So I'm like, has to be good, right? Oh, wait, what? Okay, this is like the shortest thing ever, but I guess since I already clicked on it, we're just gonna read it and see. Am I the asshole for kicking out my girlfriend after she called me a creep over a preference of mine? My girlfriend, 23 female, and I, 25 male, have been together for two months. We've been talking for another two months before getting together. We were still learning things about each other, and this was still a very fresh relationship. We were talking about preferences. The topic of pubic hair came up, and she told me she prefers if guys shave the balls. Well, that's what I always do. She asks me what I think about women shaving, and I told her I prefer if women are shaved down there. I don't mind hair at all, but it's just nice touch if it's shaven. That's all. She flipped out on me and told me I was a weirdo, that all men are creeps for even liking it bald. I was very confused because she keeps herself shaved. I didn't even want to fight about this, and I told her it'd be the best if she just leave. She left and sent me a message apologizing for going off, and I just ignored it. Every since she's just been spamming me occasionally and insulting me am i missing something was what i say was saying wrong um <laughs> wait what that's so confusing maybe i'm thinking like maybe there's some underlying reason like does she have some like trauma or something because that sounds like something very to freak out, to say that you prefer men shaved and then to freak out when he says like the same thing basically back is just a little, it's just a little off to me. Let's just read a couple of the top comments and then we'll go on to like an actual story and not just like a random little entry. 
She's 100% being a hypocrite. She prefers when men shave, but you can't prefer when women shave. You both shave, so it doesn't even make sense as a problem. Not the asshole. This post sounds fake. She's so unaware while in the same breath preferring he shaves. I don't get it. It seems like I have triggered some folks. Oh, that must have been after. Oh, dear. It's so full of that kind of people. I can definitely see this happening. Okay. Well, I don't even know what the frick that was. That was stupid, but (laughs) I'm like, let me unsave this because that was kind of dumb, to be honest. Oh, wow. Okay. This one is 21,000 upvotes and 4.7 thousand comments. So, you know, we're going to read this one. And it's not that long, but let's see. Am I the asshole for loudly confronting my coworker in front of everyone when she wrongfully believed that I had groomed my wife? I am 30 years old and male. My wife, Jessica, is 22 years old. My wife has a 7-year-old son, Max, whom she had when she was 15 years old. The father, who was her boyfriend in junior high school and is the same age as Jessica, actually left the state when he and his family learned that she was pregnant. Jessica has no idea where he is, and since her family is well off, she didn't really need or care for his support. I met Jessica when she was 20, we dated for a year, and then we got married when she was 21. I love Max, and I raise him as if he was my own. Last month, Max came to my workplace with Jessica in the early afternoon to surprise me with a lunch outing. As they waited for me to finish up a meeting, the front desk secretary, Claire, chatted with Jessica. I wasn't there for the conversation, but Claire was stunned at how young Jessica looked, and Jessica said that she was 22. Apparently, Claire did a bit of napkin math and came to the following conclusions. 1. Jessica is 22 and I am 30. 2. Max is 7. And 3. That means Jessica and I had Max when she was 15 and I was 23. Apparently, from that day on, Claire began gossiping about this. I had no idea what was going on, but I did notice that Claire abruptly changed her attitude towards me, glaring when she thought I wasn't looking or rolling her eyes when I talked to other people. Well, today at work, when I was in the bathroom washing my hands, I overheard Claire gossiping with a new hire about my underaged wife outside the door by the water cooler. I left the bathroom and then walked up behind Claire. She turned around and looked like a deer in headlights at me. And so I announced loudly, Hi, Claire. You see, I'm not Max's biological father. In all of your gossiping to other people, you forgot to consider the most obvious possibility, which was I am his stepfather. I will, by the way, be reporting you to HR for this. I headed directly to HR and explicitly told them what Claire had said, and the manager, a fellow gossip friend of Claire's, asked if I really wanted to escalate over something so small. I said yes. She then told me Claire is a single mother and relies on this job, and that I shouldn't have embarrassed her in front of the office like that. I insisted on filing a report. After calming down a bit, I feel kind of bad about what I did. Claire cried at her desk and left early. Was I an asshole to approach the issue that way? Okay, I'm going to say my thoughts right off the bat. And then we'll get into some comments because I always feel like sometimes the comments skew me a little bit. But then I'm like, oh, and I see it from their perspective. So what I'm going to say is... I would have done the same thing. I would have also been like, because this girl's going around spreading lies about you, and not only is it lies, but it's also illegal. Like, that is something, that is a very, very huge accusation to say that basically you are a P word, you know? Like, that is a very big accusation. And that could literally ruin your whole entire life and your reputation. And like, I don't know. I would rather not have people thinking that about me, especially, I mean, if it was true, that's one thing. Like, yeah, he deserves, he would deserve to be like fired because bye. But it's obviously not. And she's just going around spreading this rumor that she has no idea she came up with it all on her own just by just by simply seeing Claire and her child. So it's like, girl, 
calm down. I definitely would have reported her as well. And it would have made me even more mad if the HR was saying, like, are you sure you want to escalate? I would have been like, yeah, I'm sure. Are you on her side? Like, you're besties with her, so you don't want me to. But guess what? This is, like, not okay. Okay. So, the top comment says, what an HR hypocrite. You embarrassed her in public? WTF does he think she was doing? She was claiming OP was a P word. I am in a very similar boat. Different ages. I'm 10 months older than my wife. She had her first at age 15. I entered the picture a few years later, so I'm only 16 years older than my stepdaughter. Wait, she he's only 10 months older than... I'm confused. I was the stay-at-home parent... Sorry, excuse me. I was a stay-at-home parent for many years as the kids were getting older. I took my oldest in for her first appointment for birth control when she was 14 due to period complications. The doctor entered the room and wrongfully assumed and heavily questioned me on to why a man is bringing an underage girl in for birth control. Doctor started getting loud until I snapped back at her that I'm the father. She was awfully quiet for the remainder of the appointment. That's crazy. This is why they train healthcare providers to say, and who do you have with you today? It saves so much emotional energy and awkwardness. I'm 40 and look fairly young for my age. And when I take my almost 16 year old, he's fairly tall, same height as me to the doctors. I always get asked who I am. Not so much when he was little, but now he's adult size. I get it a lot. Yeah, I had doctors ask if I even wanted if he even wanted me in the same room because he's 15 and can't basically do this by himself. I was like, oh, you're right. Let me step step outside. I had a miscarriage 10 years ago and the paramedic asked if my then 17 year old son was the father. Oh my God, stop crying. So scary. Um, that's not the same, but like me and my ex-boyfriend always used to get that. We were siblings. Like they were like, oh, are you brother and sister? And we'd be like, no, I mean, that's definitely different than, like, if it was my brother and people thought that we were dating, I would be so scared. Actually, when my great-grandma was still alive, this was, like, years and years ago, when I was in, like, high school, I was probably 17 or something, I don't know, but she was in the hospital and she had dementia, but we went to visit her, and I was with my dad, and she, like, didn't know who I was, obviously, because she couldn't remember me. But she remembered who my dad was, and she was like, is this your girlfriend? And I was like, oh, stop, I'm crying. I was literally, like, 17, and my dad's, like, 50. Like, sorry, Grandma, but she had dementia, so we can't blame her for that. I was just so, I did not like that moment in time. It was very awkward. Okay, let's see what's... guys today I actually am super tired like I genuinely need a nap so I'm so sorry if I'm like low energy I'm like sweating and I also have a headache and I'm also really tired (laughs) like I'm like uh, I'm definitely gonna take a nap after this Ooh, ooh, baby okay let's read this this is a short one but Uh, wait sorry come on okay am i the asshole for telling my fiance I don't want his last name or his mom at our wedding oh i think there's some updates on this one okay slay am i the asshole for telling my fiance i don't want his last name or his mom at our wedding last december my fiance male 25 and i female 23 became engaged the engagement itself was very unexpected and felt very sudden as we had only been dating for two years since however i accepted as i love him and i couldn't imagine a future without him in it since our engagement we've had several wedding related conversations and i've expressed to him numerous times that i would like to keep my maiden name and not adopt his the reason for this is that my parents never had any sons and i am an only child i want to carry on the family name for my parents And I want my children to have the choice of which last name they want to go by and or both. 
I've expressed all of this to my fiancé, and he complied and reassured me that he was okay with my decision on the matter. As the wedding draws closer, I received a call from the cake planner last night regarding our cake, which we had met with him and designed a few weeks prior. He informed us that he had a sample prepared for us to come and see, so we drove there the next morning to sample it. Needless to say, I was a bit shocked when he pulled out the cake, which had the words Mr. and Mrs. Smith, my husband's last name, printed on top. Thinking it was an accident, though I had strictly told him to just write Mr. and Mrs. on the cake, I asked him to correct it for the final wedding cake for our wedding, which was in two weeks. He informed me that my fiancé had called him yesterday morning and asked him to include Smith on top along with the previous initials. On the car ride home, my fiancé informed me that he was not comfortable with me keeping my last name and that he had a conversation with his mother two days prior in which she informed him it was feminine, weak, and woke for him to comply for him to comply to my wishes and that she was and that he was signing himself up for an abusive marriage talking with the rest of the wedding planning staff i found out he also instructed that the table centerpieces official handouts etc all be changed to have mrs and mr smith on them instead of separate last names with the help from his mother after our argument, I informed him that I would call off the wedding if he did not comply with my wishes and that I didn't want his mother attending our wedding ceremony either way. He moved out and refuses to talk to me since. Am I the asshole? Okay, some relevant comments. This is like a repost. So it says like the relevant comments instead of like me being able to read from the top comments, if that makes sense. I'm sure you know because a lot of you are on Reddit. But, okay, so someone said, OP's parting comment should be better a woke whore than a pathetic little sunspind. Um, okay. Commenter, can I ask how this wasn't apparent before? Has there ever been any hard conversations, any disagreement that your fiance talked to his mom and followed what she said? Regardless, for my wife and I, family is important, and if we don't get along with each other's family, it would be a deal breaker. There can't be your family or me situation. You guys have to be in agreement on how to navigate family issues while supporting each other and maintaining a healthy relationship. I agree with that, but at the same time, it's like if your family member is extremely toxic I'm not gonna get along with them you know like sorry I'm not gonna get along with them and that if my fam, like if one of my family members was extremely toxic and it's like questionable to even why I had them in my life and why I still talk to them then I would not expect my spouse or my significant other to get along with them you know what I mean like in that case like if someone is so if this mom was so toxic as she seems to be that shouldn't be a deal breaker like you should also see if you can't see that your mom's toxic and is like disgustingly toxic and almost to the point where maybe you should just like you know set some boundaries which you probably should set some boundaries if this is how she's talking about your wife like that is very toxic and it's definitely okay to be like either you choose to have that relationship with your mother or you choose me because if your mother is swaying your opinion that much and especially to such a disrespectful degree when you had your own like opinion already and you were fine with it then I think that you should probably sit, get the frick out of that relationship you know like I'd be like bye if you really want to choose your mommy over me when she is acting like that then you're never gonna have like a good relationship because your mom is a monster you know what I'm trying to say.
Okay, but she commented back, I have no idea. We've had many conversations about this topic as well as political beliefs, religion, etc. And he claimed to align with everything I did. Only recently has he started coming out with polar opposite views and sneaking around. He's shown some slight jealousy of me in the past, which I suppose could be a red flag. I'm a model and he frequently brings it up in conversation that he's insecure about it. But other than that, everything else has been really minor problems. His mom, she has a history of interference. And then she said, it says to a different commenter, you're right. The man I was engaged to was nothing like this. Honestly, I feel like I don't even know him anymore. And the thought just makes me sad. I need to call off the wedding. My future husband and I are both liberals. And we've had many conversations about our political beliefs and opinions regarding last names specifically. And I thought we were both on the same page. He has not expressed discomfort and security with my decision to keep my last name until now. And it just feels so unexpected and out of the blue. Well... It doesn't sound like the mom is the same. It sounds like she's more of... It sounds like she's more misogynistic. Whereas I think he originally is more like open and equality. And then his mom's like, that is weak of you. Which is so scary. (laughs) That's so you. Okay. Let's see. Wait, what? Ugh. Not the asshole. That right there is a guy who's trying to marry his mom, not you. F a bullet. That's a nuke, and you better dodge it think about how he and his mother will try to control your life and your future children's lives run girl run i really thought i loved him and i just don't know anymore i can't imagine future being tied down to a man that doesn't agree with me though commenter your conscience is right your conscience is right imagine how much he says imagine how much he and his mother say would allow a woke whore over whether she went out to work and had financial independence over how to raise any children over whether to have children cut yourself loose your conscience won't do you wrong you're right his mother is definitely not my cup of tea and while i thought i could ignore it this is definitely over the line yeah it's mm, definitely over the Okay, she put an edit and it says, edit, to clarify, I gave him the opportunity to do couples counseling as well as agreeing that we could do joint last names on any future children's birth certificates, along with trying to have a rational conversation with him. The argument started when he called me a woke whore for my decision, the one he had previously agreed to, and that's when I told him it may be in our best interest to call off the wedding and ban his mother. The main reason I'm upset is not because of his desire to take my last name is not because of his desire for me to take his last name, but that he originally told me he was fine with it and then went back and changed things against my wishes. Okay, ready for this? This is the update, June 17th, 2024. Ooh, this was recent. And this is the next day. Yesterday evening, I made the decision to text my fiancé and call off the wedding. I texted him the following message. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that the wedding is off. Please inform your relatives slash friends that the only Mrs. Smith they will find standing near the aisle will be your mom. I will mail back your ring to your mother's address, but please do not get in touch with me after this, or this woke whore will take your ass to court. To which he responded with a long profession of love, including several I didn't mean it, as well as it was an accident. I left this message on read and comfortably blocked his number. However, I didn't expect to receive a call from his mother an hour later who ran her mouth at me over the phone and called me a crazy bee and informed me that she was going to make my life a living hell for what I did to her son. I already made plans to change my lock and install a front porch camera, but should I be doing anything else to protect myself? I am also receiving nasty messages from my ex-fiance's friends threatening me for my decision i will plan to donate any and all food to a nearby homeless shelter and i like another user's idea to contact the baker and have the lettering changed too they say this so much woke beep 
Instead, I will also contact any of my own friends, family about the cancellation and give my best explanation, as well as canceling the venue, photographer, etc. Thank you all. I don't know now. Why am I like not liking this update? Like it's making me feel like it's kind of fake because you're going to text him and call off the wedding. And it seems like a little dramatic, you know? I don't know. So some relevant comments on that is, OP, good for you. I would keep any messages and voicemails and take them to the police for a restraining order. She seems unhinged. I'd also make a simple post or send a message that anyone interested in trying to harass you will have some explaining to do to the police, etc. You literally dodged a bullet and good for you for not putting up with that BS. Thank you. I've already printed out several screenshots and recorded voicemails just in case I need them in the unfortunate event that this escalates even more. Do you have a friend or family member who can come stay with you for a few days just in case X or mommy shows up? I do. My parents will be staying with me until I can install new locks and cameras. Okay. Update two in the comments 12 hours later. This looks a little bit like it's very short, but it looks juicy. My ex-fiance's mom just now texted me informing me that my fiance had been cheating with a girl from his high school during the entire length of our relationship. In her text, she included several suggestive screenshots of conversations my fiance and said girl had together. I left her on red. My self-esteem is crushed. Everything else was just icing for this massive slice of shit cake. I have never felt more confused, used, broken, and betrayed as I do right now. I feel so physically sick, I want to die. That is crazy. Relevant comments say, Wow, your fiancé and his mom are a real piece of work. I'm so sorry that you are being made to suffer in this way by them. Hopefully, you can find the time to reflect on how much better your life will be without these toxic, women-hating people in your life. Even if it is not the life you thought it was going to be, it will be a better one. And a million congrats to you for having the courage to call off a wedding so late and last minute, for not caving to his weak attempts to apologize, and for withstanding the harassment from his friends and family. You are such a strong person. You are already so much better off, and you will be even happier and better off as time goes on. She said, thank you. That means a lot. It sounds like either way, I was always plan B in my fiance's life. The only plan B I'm willing to take is a pill to prevent myself from having kids and subject them to this POS father. (laughs) Slay queen. Okay, I'm going to just read some comments on this actual post. Because those were comments on the original post and then this is like copy and pasted onto a different subreddit, if that makes sense. (coughs) Sorry. Oh my god. Okay. The fact that his mother sent her what I'm guessing are NSFW screenshots of her son cheating. Why would someone in their right mind even do that? Poor OOP. I hope she starts feeling better soon. In time, she'll realize she dodged a bullet. And then someone commented back to that and said, how would she even have them? And then someone said, the mother is the affair partner. Ew. Ew. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised. She seems determined to be the only and therefore prettiest girl in his life. It all. It all started when she got stuck in the washing machine. I'm scared. I knew I'd get asked this eventually. Oh. That's what I thought too. I bet the mom and son manufactured the whole thing to get back at her. X has to give his phone to his mommy every day at 8 p.m. before he goes to sleep and he better leave it unblocked, unlocked or mommy will get upset and ground him. <laughs> okay. Well, those are just silly funny comments, but um that's i think that's the end of it right yeah that would be actually crazy if the mom was a affair partner oh my god i would literally throw up so many times that's disgusting but well it also sounds like you dodged a bullet but not only that you were pretty young like to already be engaged i mean everyone is different but like you're fine you know like you started dating this guy when you were 21 and you're 23 now like you will be a-okay you be single for like 
a couple years or a year or something or however you however long you want to be and live your life because you're so young and honestly after that like after going through that no like you disgusting goodbye say goodbye to that okay guys i'm yawning so much i can't all right ready (laughs) am i the asshole for suspecting my wife is doing something awful at her friend's bachelorette week wait i read that wrong Am I the asshole for suspecting my wife of doing something awful at her friend's bachelor week, bachelorette week? Why am I reading like that? Stop. Bachelorette week in Mexico. She spent virtually zero money and took no pictures. I am in the middle of probably the biggest crisis of my adult life and I can barely think so. I apologize in advance if this came across as really weird or rambly. My wife went to Mexico last week for a friend's bachelorette party. And aside for the plane ticket, the hotel, and the first day's food and drinks, she didn't spend a penny all week. I mean, on the credit card, it's as clear as day that on Monday up until about 9 p.m. she was buying dinner and stuff at the hotel shop, drinks at the bars, souvenirs, and then at 9 p.m. she didn't spend another cent the entire week until she was at her layover airport in Dallas. She says it's because her friend took over and paid for everything. I guess this is plausible, but it still is giving me a funny feeling. What is worse is that my wife is a person who posts her entire life on Instagram on and TikTok, mostly Instagram, but if she does anything from get a latte to picking up this to picking the kids up at school, she will post it either as a picture or as a story. The last thing she posted on TikTok was that trend of people jumping into their vacation from the airport and after that her social media is blank. I was kind of keeping an eye on it because I was excited for her to go on the trip and again I guess it's possible but it gives me a funny feeling. When she got home, I said I can't wait to see all the pics she took and she really blew me off and said that she didn't feel like taking pics that week. She has also been incredibly distant and last night she said she just felt like sleeping on the couch because the AC hits better. This is 100% true. But I swear I heard her talking on the phone in the middle of the night. When I got up to check on her, I accidentally tripped over the dog and made a huge racket. So when I got downstairs, she appeared to be asleep. I brought all of this up in the morning and said I'm not accusing her of anything, but all this put together is making me feel uneasy. I wasn't trying to bait her or fight with her, just get my feelings on the table. She said, you are a major effing a-hole for bringing this up on her first day back at work. I said I wasn't trying to pry, just communicating with her. And she said, your communication is prying and I'm not discussing this with you ever again. She then took the kids to summer camp and left. What? She's a little too defensive for me. Like, she's definitely doing something sketchy because no one would be that defensive. Like, if that were my... If that were my boyfriend and he was like this is making me feel weird i would be like wait what i'm so sorry i'm so confused but like what can i do to like make you feel better about this and not only that but she's definitely doing something sketchy because if this girl didn't take if this girl didn't take one of those videos with all of her friends at like that were with her at the bachelorette like the vacation thing you know the trend on tiktok that he's talking about where you like hop over your phone and you're at the airport and then you hop over and it's like you at the beach if that was just her by herself that would be so weird because that's definitely something that like she would probably want to do with her bachelorette group of friends if she was really on the vacation and i'm sure like i feel like when you're with your friends on a bachelorette trip also where everyone else is going to be definitely taking content and taking pictures and videos and stuff she's probably feeling even more comfortable to take content and post content and the fact that she didn't is so sketchy okay so there's an edit so i realized that her texts probably sync to her ipad so i just checked it took me a while to figure out the passcode but i did there was an iMessage at 9 15 the night she got to the resort from a number with no contact info that said okay i'll meet you in the lobby is the app you said signal i looked up signal and it's kind of like whatsapp the ipad doesn't have signal on it 
Okay, let's see. So some of the top comments say, so she didn't even deny it, just stated that she'll never discuss it again. She didn't even discuss it. Yeah, she says as hell. Agree. I understand being a little upset about bringing something so heavy up right before the first day back at work, but to say we won't ever discuss it again or deny it sounds very much like gaslighting and avoiding. Having been through something similar, I would say there is something going on. Absolutely, her reaction is a huge red flag. He has a right to be suspicious. How do you understand being a little upset about your partner trying to have a healthy communication? Yeah, I wouldn't, I don't think that's right to be upset about. Unless he's constantly accusing you of cheating and you're really not, then yeah, okay, I get why you would be frustrated about that. But if you just went on a week long trip and you have no pictures and nothing, and he's feeling a little uneasy about that then why are you mad like why don't you just be compassionate and be like have a simple civil mature adult conversation with him op responded well to be fair to her i didn't accuse her of anything i just said that the combination of things is making me uncomfortable and then someone commented back, any partner who gives a damn would stay and talk it out. Her reaction is very suspicious and would be the smoke necessary for me to think there's a fire. If you're the primary on the family plan, you can get the numbers she's texting and calling late at night from the logs. If you have her phone password, I would be checking it after she goes to bed. Yeah. I would be checking it too. <laughs> that was two hours ago, so that's a very early story hopefully we will get some edits but i mean that is just so like that's so sketchy and there's just no explanation for that like truly she's cheating and i'm so sorry to break it to you but there's no explanation for that especially knowing the type of like person she is like if i went on vacation even if I didn't feel like taking pictures, there'd at least be a couple, like a couple Snapchats or maybe like a one to two stories on my Instagram story of like drinks with my friends or something. Like even if I was not feeling, and I don't post as much as this girl posts, as much as he says that she's posting, like that sounds like insane. He po She posts everything to either her story or to actual an Instagram post. That's a little crazy. And it sounds a little, dare I say, well, I don't know how old they are, but um, what's like older than millennial baby boomer? <laughs> no, I think that's way older than millennial, but that sounds like a little outdated for you to be posting everything on your Instagram, like posts, like stories is a different story, but like posts. So that's just not believable because there's no way you don't have one picture of like you and your friends or like what about your friends like the bachelorette people or the wet the bride if she didn't post anything there's your answer like I don't think it's I really don't think it's that hard like genuinely if he just like texted maybe one of his like if he has a friend that's a girl if he just texted her and told her all of this that girl could easily find out like if some if one of my guy friends texted me all that I would literally be FBIing that shit like and it's not even that hard it wouldn't be really even FBIing it would be me simply going and looking at who the bride is and if he knows anyone else who was on the which I'm sure he has to know who he has to know who the bride is and other people that would be on the bachelorette what is it in the bachelorette party so like that'd be so easy to find out I would literally just go and look at all of their Instagrams and if not one of them posted something with her in it that is literally your answer right there so it's really not that hard to find out like I definitely think I would just be maybe he's in denial or something I don't know okay this I I love the way that this like why I hate the way this title is. This title is so silly goose. Okay, let's see. 
Am I the asshole fiance's ex in wedding party? I am 27 female and my fiance is 33 male. We have been dating for about four years now and engaged last year. Prior to us dating, my fiance dated his child best friend, Liz, for eight years. They were briefly engaged before calling it off. From what I was told, they decided to break it off because they were getting married for the wrong reasons. They were planning to get married because it was the next step and that since their families were best friends, he needed to marry her. After they broke off the engagement, they remained friends. Since the beginning of our relationship, I knew Liz was in my fiance's family lives. Liz and my fiance's moms are best friends. Liz and my fiance's moms are best friends. Liz is also best friends with his younger sister. My fiance and her are friends with the same social circle. I don't have a problem with Liz and her friendship with my fiance. I actually like her as a person and would consider her a friend. However, there are times when we hang out that I feel left out, like I'm a third wheel, because they're inside jokes and shared childhood stories. I have always tried to be open-minded about their friendship since he assured me that they are only friends, and I do trust both of them. My fiancé and I are finalizing our wedding party now. Sorry, I literally just freaked out. (laughs) My fiancé and I are finalizing our wedding party now. Since both of us have best friends who are the opposite sex, we agreed that it's okay to have the opposite sex in our own wedding party. I told him who I wanted to ask to be in my wedding party. He mentioned that it would mean a lot to him to have his sister be a part of my wedding party. I get along with his sister well. So I wasn't, I get along with his sister well, so I agreed to include her. When he listed his wedding party, he mentioned Liz. I was taken aback. I told him that I wasn't comfortable with having her be in the wedding party. I told him I am more than happy to have her attend the ceremony and reception and that she can sit with his family and be in the family pictures. However, that wasn't good enough for him. He said that it's his wedding party and that it was his decision who's going to be in it that I have the right to choose my own wedding party, so he should be able to choose whoever he likes. I told him that's not fair because I'm not having my high school sweetheart in my wedding party. This is becoming a huge fight between us. He said he is putting his foot down and Liz is going to be in the wedding party. I told him that I will not budge on this. Out of anger, I told him to choose, me or her. If she's in the wedding party, then I won't be standing on the altar. He responded to me by telling me that I was acting crazy and that he's going to stay with his brother until I can calm down and be reasonable. It's been three days now. He has texted me twice since the fight. First time to ask if I have calmed down and am ready to be reasonable and the second to ask if I have agreed to his wedding party list. I told him my answer is still no and that I don't know if I can let this one go. Am I the asshole? Should I just let it go? Girl, what is wrong with these men? Stop first of all i don't care who your ex is i don't care if your ex is literally your conjoined twin she's not being in our family pictures for our wedding and i don't know why i just call i just turned country but that is making me so angry first of all she's not being in our wedding party second of all she is not being in any of the family pictures why would she be in the family pictures i don't care i literally don't care like what there's no way in the world there's no world in which this woman would be in my wedding pictures with the family she is not she is literally his ex and it's fine if you want to invite her to the ceremony and you feel fine about inviting her to the ceremony but even him suggesting that she's going to be in his wedding party is insane and then you even saying that she it's okay she's in the family pictures for like a compromise is even crazier like what is this what is this sorry i like not to sound insecure but i just don't think it's normal and second of all why is he literally willing to lose his his almost wife over wanting to have his high school sweetheart that he was once engaged to in his wedding party like he's genuinely going to lose someone that he sees forever with over whether or not he can have this girl in his wedding party i don't really understand the point here like i don't understand it first of all it's weird how you even want her in in your wedding party okay that's that's one thing but 
I would brush that off if you then were like, okay, sorry that I like suggested that. And I'm sorry if that makes you uncomfortable. I won't have her in my wedding party. Okay. Then it would be brushed off at that point. But then to make it this big of a deal and say that I'm going to have her in my wedding party, I'm going to have her in my wedding party, then make, then not talk to me for multiple days until you calm down and agree that she can be in my wedding party. Bye. Bye. For real, bye. Like, no thanks. No thanks. That's actually so crazy. So crazy. Okay, so there's two updates and we're going to read them right now. Because I literally want to punch someone. Edit. Thank you everyone for your input. I called my fiance this morning and asked if we could discuss the situation. I told him that I want him to hear my reasonings for not wanting her to be in the wedding party. And in exchange, I'll listen and try to understand his POV. We are going to discuss it tomorrow night. I will give you guys an update then. In the meantime, I'll answer some questions. Liz, this is not her real name, does have a boyfriend. They have been dating for about six months now. The topic of wedding party never came up in our relationship because we always assume we will do a small, intimate destination wedding. So there wouldn't need to be a wedding party. However, our parents were both against that idea and wanted us to have a big wedding. We decided to compromise with them and do both weddings. I have zero problem with his sister being in my party. To be honest, I should have thought to ask her myself. I believe my fiance wants me to have a closer relationship with her and hopes that this would be a start. In the beginning of my relationship with my fiance, I have mentioned my jealousy. We worked through it and he assured me. Since then, I really didn't have any issues with her being in our lives except for her except for her to be standing in the wedding. This is not his usual behavior. We are both a very we are both very chill people and don't usually do ultimatums. I think this might be the first time in our relationship. In the contrary, I feel like we both have always been able to compromise really well. As far as I know, Liz doesn't know about the conversation slash fight and I don't want her to know. I want him to choose to not have her stand in the wedding and not because she doesn't want to be in it, if that makes sense. Okay, this is the last update. Update. Thanks for everyone who commented on my previous post. I apologize for the delay in responding. We did have a talk. We both laid out where we stand and our reasonings. He insisted that Liz be in his wedding party. His point of view is that he wants to share his busy, busy, his biggest life decision with his closest friends. Friends that have stayed by him since he was a baby. I get that. I truly do, as I also want to have my best friends to be standing there with me. It did make me feel like the asshole for being so against it. However, I can't change how I feel. I still don't want her to be in the wedding party. T, as you should. But I'm willing to let it go. However, this fight did bring a lot of issues to the surface. For one, her involvement in our relationship going forward. Second, the easiest, the easiness for him to walk away during a fight. I don't accept how this fight went about. Marriage is forever. We will have bigger fights in the future, but a fight should never end in one side walking away. Third, my uneasiness of the insistence he has for her to be in our wedding party. If the role was were reversed, if the roles were reversed, he insisted that my best friend not be in the wedding, I would have done so because it's our day, not just mine. I believe compromise is important in a marriage. I didn't see any signs of his willingness to compromise. So, after all that, we are still engaged. However, we have decided to postpone setting a date for the wedding. We are thinking maybe sometime in late 2025. We are going to see if we can build back the trust that we had and if we can build a stronger foundation for our relationship. Thanks, everyone. So then what's the consensus? Did he say, never mind, I'm not going to have her in the wedding party? Because that's all I need to know. And if he didn't, then bye. Why are you even giving it a chance? Like, for real. If you want to be with her, be with her. Like, I don't understand. But okay. Okay, girl. I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy. But just let me know what you think about that. Like, would you be okay with that? I would. I just don't understand in what world, like... I mean, okay, say you are okay with it. That's fine. I guess. I guess that's fine. I don't know. But, like, not being okay with it is 100% okay, too. And it totally makes sense why you wouldn't. I don't care if you were literally 
pushed out of the same womb within two minutes of each other. Well, that would make you guys twins. (laughs) But like, you dated her and you were engaged. No. No. Sorry, that's just the easiest answer for me. I feel like I'm abruptly ending this episode because that's really all I have to say about that. And I stand firm on that. I stand firm on that for real. Um, But for real, let me know what you think like about that situation and what you would do. Would you be like, that's fine? Or would you be like, "Mm, no, mommy? Like, I don't I don't know what I don't know if I'm alone in this. Obviously, I'm not because she's the same But she just, the fact that she's even saying, like, I'm just going to let it go, I would not be letting it go. Maybe that's me being stubborn, but I would not. I would be so, I've been bringing it up every day. I'd be like, "Mm, sorry. But, okay. That is the last of the stories for this episode. Happy Wednesday. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Obviously, leave a comment because you guys know that I love to talk to you all. And I can't wait to talk to you. And I'm so happy to have you here. I love you so much. See you on Friday.